Oh man, now you're comfortable. <laughs> Did you like the thump I added? You got that, right? <laughs> uh, Nobody good. listens in April. We don't do any content in April, so there's no one. Oh, the site that. ends in April. <laughs> the site goes on hiatus. Close down. Like, literally. Yep. <laughs> right after the spring game. They don't hear yep. from us again until August. Yep. Oh man. What's this boring ass title? Purdue beaten by UConn. I, more... I agree. I would prefer the other title, but uh, you know, like that's not what happened. I look back at last year's when we all got on bravely, brave faces. I think yeah. the day after the FDU oh, yeah. game, and I don't maybe know if you like this. No. Okay. And you said you said it was a rebuilding year after all. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know this year is different this year was different that's cool i don't know that's about nice. uh, it, like i don't uh, first of all that's a niche Hello. okay there's boiler down um purdue played to their seed man and then some right i mean not and then some i guess if you're the number two overall and you lose the number one no overall, they played exactly to their seed is what they did <laughs> Just do that all the no time. Big yeah. No big whoop. No big whoop. Number three, um, number three overall. Uh, number two, kind of, you know, went down with an injury, and so I guess they played past their seat. They played above their seat. Yeah, they played above their seat because they were yep. three overall, actually. Right, right. That's right. impressive. I don't it's know. Really I, impressive. I of course wanted to win as well. However, well, I've had a number did. of people who are like, Interesting. "What's that?" You did want to win. Okay. That's wild that you'd want to win the championship. That's crazy. That's why I added the of course, you two dumbasses. Continue, continue. But I said, but I had a number of people giving me the conciliatory, you know, because I don't live where you guys, well, where 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 the dad lives. I don't I don't have people jackasses like dancing on my grave, right? I've got people who are like, oh, I was actually hoping you'd find happiness because <laughs> they know that nope. we don't. And um, I was like, no, I'm I'm not. Like I, I was disappointed that night. I was, I found myself sad and ready to go to bed. Not ready to go to bed right away, but not long. I was like, all right, yeah, whatever. But I don't. It's not lingering. This wasn't me. happy. This wasn't. I'm not kidding. This this wasn't a happy season. That's what I'm I mean, saying. It was. This I'm is, saying. People I, are I, stupid. I people usually are after stupid. the last loss of the year, usually sure. when you lose, you're a little bit saddened that it's over. Yeah, I had a jackass on Twitter try to try to tell me that try the the put down was. Uh, enjoy your runner up, and I'm like, okay, you, you, uh, yeah, good, yeah, I, this is awesome season. You I, I was me. great. I said, That's the weakest trash talk anyone could give me, and it's always from like it's Illinois fans or I don't give a shit. IU fans, I don't care, I don't care, I mean, but it, I doesn't, don't care. it doesn't matter. You went to the final four, that's a regional Just, championship, you are one of the four best teams, like, you know, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, like, and, and by the way, this is wire to wire. Top one of the best teams in America. Season. Top three the whole season. Right. Getting beat by UConn is not an embarrassment. Their well, fans are an embarrassment. Danny I can Hurley's tell you that. Much. Kind of an embarrassment. Danny Hurley's an embarrassment. But that team is really damn good. And he's a really good coach, but he's yep. an absolute embarrassment of a person. And their fans love him because they're the same type of They're player. exactly the same way. That's so that I mean that's okay. And and that and listen, they like being that way. You and I have oh, lived around all three of us have lived around this type of person and these type of people in a group. So they're good with it, and we're good with where we are. Like I'm I'm serious. If if this is the block that Purdue has to deal with, some dick bag in the northeast acting the fool all the time. Okay. Congratulations. They're a very, very good team. Their team is constructed well, they used NIL perfectly. They spent a lot of money and they got the right guys. A lot of schools, I, I'm not kidding, a lot of schools in America spent a lot on NIL, NIL more than UConn, probably. I, I haven't seen, but it said they spent 7.4 million. Purdue spent two. Okay. We know what $1.5 million pretty much went to Zach, right? I mean, Purdue got a bunch of guys that just want to be at Purdue. Well, damn it to hell, that's that's lousy. <laughs> no, it's awesome. And I love the fact that Matt Painter is exactly who it is. I said this guy's matured more after age 35 than any human being I've ever seen. He's incredible. He is a coach that is admirable. Everybody but UConn fans, uh, IU fans, Michigan State fans, and Illinois fans admire the guy. And they probably admire him deep do. down too. I think a lot of them do. I think the They're not willing to do it. And I say, oh, boy, I want to curse right now. I mean, like, I've been trying to stop myself from doing it. But 
No, the, I am extremely pleased with the season. And anyone that talks shit to me about going to the finals, whatever. I mean, yeah, it's such a stupid whatever. It, it goes back to the thing I've said this in the past. I remember during maybe it was basketball, but I definitely remember during football. Like if you if you were to if you ever say anything about a team, there's always some dick bag to use your word mm-hmm. who will be like we're the blue finish and i'm like wait a minute so unless you win the national title you can't have an opinion on anything you can't say anything about anything but that's the dumbest like fourth grade level mentality it just just like the one you sent us which i i couldn't help but put on twitter i put the screenshot i didn't want to actually deal with the guy mm-hmm. but the, the, the guy making fun of Purdue fans for wearing Final Four apparel yeah, and being it. proud of being in the Final Four. I'm stoked. Like, yeah, I see it. And and I like Anisha's right to to put that on his wall. I've got a bunch of things in a cart right now. I'm ready to <clears throat> ready to print. They have a they have a spot already. I'm yeah. I'm excited. And I can tell you, I don't give a damn who you talk about or who you talk to. I really don't care. That day in Detroit's one of my favorite days as a sports fan ever. And it probably is my absolute favorite. Oh yeah. What it meant to me, yeah. how I shared it with my son, the whole thing. The fact that it's been 44 years, all this stuff. All this stuff plays into it. And I don't really need to explain myself to anybody there. It, nope. it, 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 I, don't, I don't care. I don't care. I, that's the thing. It's like it's our season to enjoy. First, like during the season, I think we were all, um, you know, like even, you know, we were all a little bit kind of dreading I think the beginning of the season and then the season started and then we all almost instantly kind of flipped where we were like let's just do this forever like let's right. not have March begin like because <laughs> everything is great it's all perfect um, right. kind of you know the, and now that the season is over we can talk about this but no injuries without like jinxing it there were no injuries we had the same starting five beginning to end that's insane all, all of the players return especially for purdue like can you imagine like it is i mean um can i can i can i vent, uh, say something that we have probably i think the three of us have talked about behind closed doors that i don't know if we've ever said publicly this Ooh. season but now i that's feel right. good about saying it yeah 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 okay and it, it, the jumping off point in is your point about the starting five and we've talked about it over and over how blessed it is to have a starting five the entire season I'm going to go to the next step. The margin for error at point guard. We've talked about this. Holy crap. Thank God we got through this. Braden Smith almost getting injured in the Big Ten tournament scared me to death. Mm -hmm. Braden Smith had no replacement. Braden Smith honestly had no backup. When he got in foul trouble, Purdue was in deep trouble. Nobody had. What did you say? Would have been Lance, right? Probably. It would have been Lance, and Lance is fine. Right. Lance is not, not the same. That's yeah. not his role. It's yeah. not his role. Guess what? Guess what? Next year, Purdue has two backups for Braden Smith coming right. in. And one of them, my guess, is going to be ready out of the gate to be a backup for Braden Smith. And he's going to learn from Braden Smith. And he's going to leave maybe being better than Braden Smith. So we're going to go from having we're going to go from having the best Purdue point guard in at least 40 years, in my opinion. Okay to having maybe another great point guard right after him. This is the whole point about this, this team. Th- this is the thing that's great about other fans saying Purdue is now dead without Zach Eady. More's coming. Yeah. This is going to be fun the next couple of years. Another In fact, the coming. next two years are freaking fantastic to look forward to. Yes. Yes. Another seven-footer is coming in, guys. Hate to, hate to tell you that. but Right. Purdue's going to have two seven-two guys on the team. So Zach Eady's gone and Purdue's dead. Okay, sure. Say whatever you want. Seriously. And shout it from the mountaintops, idiots. Go ahead. Say Purdue's dead. But just look, if you're four years old, you can't say Purdue's dead because Purdue's gone through overhauls already in those four years. If you go back 10 and you look at what Painter has done, evolving his style, Purdue's not dead at all. Not even close to dead. Sorry, that that Braden Smith point though. I know. I think we've been we've been throttling that. Am I accurate there? We have absolutely. I mean, that's where, and you could even see glimpses of that in the lineups that were played when Braden needed to sit or he was in foul trouble or mm-hmm. after the hamstring or whatever. You know, it right. was um, yeah. like that was the stuff where it was like it, it was a little, um, you know, it was a little uh, 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 nerve wracking, right? Which I, is like, oh no, like is this what? I like, guess you could have. Like, Taking Purdue out in the Sweet Sixteen, you could have right? played. You know, seriously, you could have played Ethan Morton probably at that sure. spot. 
And we talked he, about that early in the season, right? Yeah, I mean, he could he can distribute. He, he's he's. I mean, man, but but that's everybody loves Ethan Morton. No one's going to take away anything from him as a boilermaker, as a teammate. Right. Incredible. His oh, ability to run an offense is if if it was what we what I listen. I, I you go back and I will eat my crow, and I wish I was right about this, but I said Ethan Morton's going to have an all-Big Ten type year his sophomore year. I remember putting out there my hot take at the end of his freshman year. <clears throat> I remember putting out there, and people are like, that's cool. I don't agree, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. I just thought the guy that I watched in the Pennsylvania State Finals would like bloom into that guy on the NCAA scale. That's it, because he was a mother in the Pennsylvania State Tournament. Like, incredible. He threw them on his back. He did everything. He could score, he could drive, he could rebound. I mean, his size, obviously, incredible. But it never came to be at Purdue, right? He he played – his his biggest uh, attribute was the fact you could put him on a bunch of different guys. He could play point. He could play like a point forward type thing. Right. He guarded small centers at times. I mean, like – had a great team guy. That was his yeah, thing. great team guy. Great team guy. Tremendous. Well, couldn't you argue that since since we're talking and the season's over and we can talk a yeah. little more freely now. Sure. And we're talking about two guys who've left the program in good standing, right? It's yeah. not like Ian Gillis. I mean, I said this. I think I said this to you guys. Th th this team is going to be remembered forever. Every guy on this team is going to be remembered. Even, right. you know, no matter what role they played, guys like Lance, which we should spend some definite time later talking about, but like a guy who started every single game, went to the final four, played one season for Purdue, but you're going to remember him forever for taking this, for being part of taking this team to the final four. But uh, Morton and Gillis, I think they both, uh, since we're speaking freely here, is, is that a criticism at all of the coaching staff? Or as good as they've done with so many players, those two guys really didn't get better, right? They were so good, not, so and you're they not talking just, about you're not talking about them leaving after this year because he's talking about is, development. I think. Yeah, no, I mean yeah, development. You're talking about I mean their the development. development through the like, Warriors. like they are the same. I don't know if they're that much better now. Gillis shot like what forty something percent from three this year. He was like, awesome, right? Like he was good. They used him so much more effect effectively, right? I right. mean, like, but he was a like, starter in the past. Yeah. Oh, he's he started sixty games. I guess. Yeah. So somebody said I was like sixty two games. Has not started any games. This is the and, first but, year. You know, right. and and to me though, and I I think he would say the same. Um, the or I think I've heard him say the same. Like it really does matter. It doesn't. You know, the starting role isn't as important as like are you like when the game is on the line, are you on on the court? And he was he was a finisher, right? Like, I mean, in the Tennessee game, I think they played like they played Gillis for the last eight minutes, right? Like that was it right, wasn't even right. you know he's a perfect so matchup for that team, right? You're finishing the game, like you for mm -hmm. most lineups actually. TKR was a starter because it was like you want to kind of overwhelm teams with your size, you mm -hmm. want to um, kind of draw fouls out, and but then when the game is on the line, like I think Mason Gillis was that he was the one that the coaches trusted. I you know it, it, there was that great video. Of Painter, um, like yeah, three minute video of Painter, um, you know, in the locker room, kind of after the loss, and you know they showed kind of selected clips from what he said. And one of the things was like he pointed to Mason, saying, "What you sacrificed coming off yep. the bench, like these are the things that like you know that matter." I think Mason got a lot more consistent this year. I think it, it's on one hand, it's like you know it, it's um, uh, uh, understandable because I for for Ethan because I don't think he got as much run as any of us would have liked um but, meaning like he didn't really that wasn't his role here and so in modern college basketball what you're supposed to do in that case is transfer um and you know find a different situation and after the way that last year ended he didn't and he kind of provided Purdue depth he we didn't need to use it but he was a breaking case for emergency type of player um I really do think that you know he, like he pushed the team and so it's like it he all, you know, it's that sacrifice, right? He kind of sacrificed personal gain for the team. It's like about as much as you can ask for a player. And to show that development, you need playing time. To get playing time, you got to beat out the people in front of you. And it's not an indictment that Mason Gillis on the second best team of the country, or I mean, uh, sorry, Ethan Morton on the second best team of the country, like couldn't break through um, to anything more than kind of about five minutes a game, whatever, four minutes a game. Like that is what it is. But he, that was a sacrifice that he made. And that is like, that's part of like, 
that even uh, Ethan didn't leave is like the calling card, uh, you know, after the 16, after the FDU loss. Like that is kind of the calling card of everything off the court with this team, right? Yeah. Which is kind of yeah. like, that's the cool part. Again, like it's fun um, to be a Purdue fan right now because we don't have to ever feel ashamed about rooting for the guys that we root for. We don't ever have to really do too many excuses. Like if yeah. the worst that you can say is Zach Eady gets hacked a lot, like I don't get like, that's, that's fine. Like there was no hint of any kind of off the court thing. Um, you know, like uh, Ethan and Gillis are now kind of exploring transfer spots, and that was even predicted. Like, I think a Newbert they went through a senior that. night for a reason, exactly. even though they had eligibility, right? I think Newbert that's the thing that this conversation exactly. happened a month and a half ago exactly. with yeah. Painter. Yeah. Um, somebody asked the question: uh, When does the portal close? I believe it's either April thirtieth or May first. It's, it's May first. Yeah. Okay. So, so yes, there's a reason these guys have to get in there quickly. Um, I understand it, but I can tell you, it for me, it feels like it was just this week that they were in the NCAA championship. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, that's no. the thing. It's so it fast. Like that's a, well, it's so else fast. Somebody else said that it was so fast, fast. Too, and I find that to be a funny statement because it opened on March 18th. Right. And, like, that's bizarre. Like, yeah. it, it, and, and, like, what, what, how long should they They wait? say we're 1,000 players in it in the first six yeah. days. I think it's like fourteen hundred now. And and right. so the you know pe when people were talking about this at the beginning, they were like, well, you know, there are going to be coaches talking to players and players kind of figuring out their next spot. So you might as well, even when the other teams are in the tournament, so you might as well open it early. And it's like, man, I don't know. Like, I don't think this is good. I I think no. that this isn't. I mean, like, I guess you know, it has to close by May first because of like. That's when you can start practicing again. Is that what the deal is? I mean, or there's something? something weird about summer practice. There's a timeline I reason. Say, I think summer semester, like that, you know. Yeah. And again, it's kind of laughable. But so like, you either, but I guess you don't want to make it any shorter. It's only 45 days, which is not a lot to recruit a thousand people. But I, I the opening during the tournament is is preposterous. It's such a I stupid mean, you, thing. You think about your life as a coach where it's like, you've got to like, and your coaching staff, they're recruiting not just the head during coach. the tournament. Exactly. Right. Like, and I guess like Purdue is lucky because even though like, I think a, a, there's a, a, there's a big talking points right now about like Purdue needing to get into the transfer portal and get people in and things like that. I don't think Purdue's good. I think Purdue again might take like one basically graduate good, transfer. Yeah. If they take any, they take one. Yeah, and I yeah. and I bet they're not gonna take any right now. Yeah. I don't I don't see it. Um, you know, it's gonna be two six that's the that's the downside of a six person freshman class, right? Which is like you're not gonna get these older players, but the core of your team is is old, right? Like or not old but experienced, well, right? They have a lot of games under their belt now. And yeah. and I you know, that actually makes me think about something else we could talk about now that the season's over a little bit but i would think that if purdue was going to have any more defections to the portal we probably would have heard about it right now because most this guys is so so maybe. there are a couple guys and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dig into there are two guys that i thought were leaning that yeah. that might be the the two that i thought okay they're gonna go in the portal now, i don't want to disparage anybody but everybody's guessing at this point i can tell you that i did a little research on both both have very good reasons to stay and it's like, like yeah, personal like, reasons. And I, if they leave, okay, it's okay. And I understand if they stay, it's okay. I, I mean, the, the worst case scenario, and I don't, maybe you guys can explain something to me, but the worst case scenario is one player on the class of six will have to go to people say prep school so he can come back and hold his space for next year. The thing I don't understand, maybe you guys can tell me this, is why couldn't the collective say, we'll just pay for your year of school? Doesn't make much sense. I mean, like it. it I don't. Probably know. against the rules, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Why? Basically. Why? Why would that be against the rules? Think about how dumb I, that is. I because mean, that's not a recruiting it's, tool, right? There's I mean, no rules. So what no, are we there's doing? no. Well, the the NCAA. Remember, they slapped Tennessee on the on the wrist, right? Because they used it as a recruiting tool. And the funny thing is, okay, fine. You guys say this isn't. He's already signed. That, like the yeah, reasons for right. NIL, this would be a perfect one. Well, it's this is a kid that you say he's probably going to red shirt anyway. To answer your question is letting you oversign if you if you're in a, if your sure. collective can now sure. pay for guys now you can sign m even more oversigning and then the really rich schools will really do that. You'll get all the talent and you'll. Yeah. I mean that really won't work, I guess, because if you sign ten guys and you only have five six slots, then what the hell are you going to do? But right. 
But we may get there because when teams start averaging three to five guys leaving. You want to pad it. I mean, like, right. I don't know why you wouldn't. I mean, Here's the thing, though. It was, it was funny. Uh, like, uh, can, uh, uh, obviously, we'll talk about this because we love, yeah. we're sickos for the carousel. But John Calipari went to yeah. um, Arkansas. Makes and no was sense. Like, I just well, met that, the team. There is no team. There's no and team. I thought, that, yeah. I thought that was a joke until nope. I realized, no, there's actually one they person rostered. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's the team. He met the guy. He met the one guy. And, and years ago, that would have meant death to your – like, if you had one player, on like, and you had yeah, to fill Cal out the rest. Fine. It would take you two years to get back. It, but yeah. they'll be fine. They'll yeah. probably contend in the SEC next year because yeah, they'll just bring sure. in a bunch of mercenaries. And, and by the way, I, I, since you brought that up, I just have to say one thing. I know this is not the uh, Coach Cal hour, and I don't want to talk like other podcasts do about, like, is this a good hire for Arkansas? I don't care about any of that. Right. What I enjoy is something we've always been fans of here, and it's when a – Spoiler, Dad, one of the words you've used over the years is hubris. When a fan base runs off one of the best coaches they've ever had. In Kentucky, you could argue maybe he's not the best coach they've ever had, but damn, man. He's in there. Oof. He is. He it, created what they wanted. He Exactly. And he, exactly and he, what they wanted. And you wanted with flash it. frying a team, right? We want the most talent. We want them to get up to speed super fast. That's it. That's the end of story. Good. And they're a threat no matter what. They'll right. be an eight or a nine. They've been to the final four as an eight, I think. A terrifying. They're, they're the eight or the nine that I was worried about. Right? Like, they're like, oh, shit, they're going to figure it out. It was a really good I, or no, People Wichita. picked them this was year. It, was, it when, was it the year that Wichita with Fred Van Yes, and stuff they knocked them the out one? in the second round because yeah. poor Wichita had to play Kentucky in the second round. And then they went to the final four. Is that right? Am I thinking right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. And that was with like with the Harrison twins. Again, all of this is like I don't need to know this. No, you don't. What are you talking like? Why? Yeah. Would my, I know? But but I love just like going back as far as Tennessee and Phil Fulmer and any program that ran off the guy that brought you tons of success. I love this. I love it. And now they're talking about BYU. Did you see this tonight? It was breaking. It was Pope from BYU. Is who? Yeah, because he's a yeah. Kentucky guy, right? Which is yeah. like wow, that's pretty low. But they so. tried that. Who was the one? I'm totally. Never going to pull the name now. Who was Ford? the one before? Ford? No. They had another guy before. It wasn't Napier, was it? No. Billy Gillespie. The wrong sport. Gillespie. 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 Nice. He was a catastrophe. Yeah, and yes. he was a good coach, but he didn't embrace the maniacal. Like, Calipari was just like, yeah, we, you know, I'm, I, this will be great. You know, and he just he knew exactly how to handle it. Oh, man. It was, it's so great that they now have to figure this out. They probably will. But yeah, man, but I mean, but we can enjoy this two weeks, you know, as it's as it's there. But I mean, okay, but like back to Purdue, it's like this is the new reality, and what's fun about Purdue is that Painter isn't going to like. Um, Newbert was talking about something which is like you. It, it, this doesn't cause like sometimes success like this and breakthroughs like this causes coaches to completely change their approach because it's right. like you think, hey, we're a Final Four team now we have to operate like a Final Four team. Like I think Painter's adjustment was made five years ago I when too. Carson was there. Painter's adjustment was made ten years ago when he was scouting players. Like th this is him. Like this is the way that he's running his program now, and that's cool. Um, like I don't. I think like Purdue is going to be one of those teams that. Um, in this era, it like gets old and stays old, like refreshes with talent. There's always going to be like, I think that every class now is going to be kind of half of these kids that may either leave for a different school or um, uh, leave for the pros kind of early. And then half of them are going to be like four year players. That's going to be like each class that that he's going to that he's going to recruit. And that's how you get old and stay old. Right. Easy, like in this era. Right. If you're if you're a kid in Indiana and you want to go to the final four. I don't know. I don't know what I mean, program like you play to, for. It used to be right. Butler, now it's Purdue, I guess. I mean, like, it's pretty great. Um, it was awesome. Indiana State in the late 70s. I don't yeah, know. Exactly. So, so Pink talked about in one of his brilliant press conferences in the last three Those weeks, were all so good. They're all Those great. So great. They're, they're, they're worthy of, of taping and archiving. They're amazing. But one thing he said was, I want to be able to – let's see if I can remember how he did it. I think he, he named – oh, he said, I want to be able to – Go out and sign guys like Biggie Swanigan. So he's yeah. referencing five star and high. And I want to be able to go out and sign guys like Zach Eady. 
and brain. So his whole point is, I I think you you're you're being foolish in your program development if you're not trusting what you see with your eyes. Meaning that guy looks like a ball player. He's gone through all of our checks, and we think he's got the right mentality. He's got the right makeup for our program. He wants to have the room. So I I read that. Here's what I heard. Here's what I heard. Let's 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 fast forward. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to go out and sign guys like Cannon Catching, and I want to be able to go out and sign guys like C.J. Cox. Yeah, like that to me is perfectly applicable. C.J. Cox, I went and checked his 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 offers today. He's got offers from like Harvard, American, uh, UNH, New Hampshire, um, a lot of Northeastern schools, a lot of really smart guy schools. Like that's awesome. There's something Painter loves about him. I believe it's defense more than anything, right? So. But he thinks that's a guy that could be an important piece of a team. Now, I I love the fact that this philosophy is something that's one of his guiding lights. Sometimes you have to go with your gut and say, yeah, I think this guy is big upside, right? I told you, the guy, my dark horse, I told you guys a couple weeks ago, I kind of whispered, okay, there's a dark horse in the class that I think will make instant impact. My my opinion is Benter, okay? There are also guys that I think are absolutely instant impact players, like I just, I just, I am beyond a shadow of doubt. I think you have two to three guys that are going to play a ton as freshmen. And so that to me plugged in with the guys that exist. And I think you're going to see a mega jump from either Colvin or Heidi. But I think they're going to push each other knowing they're both playing for similar roles, right? I think this is a good thing. The funny thing is I could see both these guys developing in a way that they can very, very well exist on the court next year a lot because their games are actually quite different because Heidi looks at times, like especially that put put back, but he looks like he could develop into something. It's somebody that's so physical yeah. that he, he just plays out there to bang on the rim, right? Like a, like, how about this? How about a nastier, more athletic version of, of Mason Gillis? I think you could see that. I mean, like, absolutely. I, you know, like, I, I think there will be lineups with him and catchings kind of out there together. And like the athleticism, athleticism of that, um, you know, it, again, like assuming all of these players come back, but uh, you know, Caleb first is an athlete. Like he is an athlete. Um, yeah. And so like him coming off the bench and kind of running and gunning, it's going to be a lot of snow drift lineup, but it's going to be a super hyper athletic. <laughs> but a damn good one though, man. Um, and, and so like, you know, it's, it's going to be like, it's going to be different. It's going to be a lot of fun. Wait, before we kind of go into next year, let's, yeah. cause we yeah. already hit Morton and we already hit um, uh, Gillis. We've got two more kind of main contributors. Shout out to Chase Martin uh, and Conzo Martin. I love Chase like, Martin. You know, I, I love the guy. Martin. I got to know him more during, down the stretch because I watched his dad's podcast with him on him. They made a yeah. smoothie. And I was just like, I just like this kid. I, I just like to, this kid. Shout out to, was it Carson Barrett? Um, Carson, yeah, yeah, Carson Barrett. Shout out to Carson Barrett. Um, but there are two guys. Let's start. Let's. This is the Lance Jones section. Speaking of Painter's ability Excellent. to kind of like – I don't care what the recruiting rankings say. I don't care what all of these other people say. I am the coach. A lot of, of people were underwhelmed. I, am, I have been doing this for 35 years. Like I understand what I'm looking for. Like going out, getting Lance Jones. I don't think any, I think we may have talked about it extremely briefly, um, you know, in August. Like a lot when of people were underwhelmed. It's like, huh, that's kind of a weird one, but like, Purdue has already got everybody on the roster that they need. And boy, did we not. Because it, Lance was like, exactly. This team does not make the Final Four without Lance Jones. Not Absolutely I, not. Like, right? That is, it's, that is it's pretty clear. What a, what a, what a brilliant move. I, I, I gave Pink credit for one, on one of the quick guests. Like because I, I, was, I was popping up stuff. I just like felt like talking. So I was like, okay, I'm going to talk. And one of them, I was like, I didn't give Painter credit for Lance Jones. Because I looked at him at his statistics. Right. The funny thing is, and then, and then early I started calling him, uh, produce Lance Stevenson. And he was a lot nicer guy, obviously than Lance Stevenson, a lot more positive guy, an amazing, amazing influence to a team's mood to have a guy that is that positive, legitimately smiling. His, his comments at the locker, there are a couple things in each, and I know you've joked around about this and I don't know, I can't tell if you're really joking or you're being seriously. Because you guys know that I'm a major wimp when it comes to just breaking out into either choked up or absolutely bawling about certain things, right? But Lance Jones talking at his locker about how blessed he was to be a pretty true player. I'm the luckiest guy alive. 
I'm all I'll forever be a boilermaker. Just like I was like, holy crap. Somebody man. asked him, I think somebody asked him if he had any regrets. And I was like, wow. And he's like, no. He's like, this was I mean, so there there are two reasons Under why the final four. I, I mean, like there are two kind of major things why why Lance Jones Purdue doesn't make the final four without Lance Jones. I think with or without Lance Jones, Zach Eady is the player of the year. With or without Lance Jones, Braden Smith um, takes that massive leap, and Fletcher Lawyer is more consistent, and Mason Gillis finds his rediscovers his three point shot. But the two things kind of are like on the court, you need that rugged defender you need another like reliable three-point shooter especially when um uh lawyer kind of went through his slump he was steady he was experienced all of these kind of things um you know you could put him like it, the defense i it's i think it's pretty clear now that even for a defender like lance jones like Purdue's defensive schemes are pretty complicated um, and it's not just as um kind of easy as getting in front of your man getting in front of your man staying in front of your man they have rules like it, it kind of works. It took, as, it took Jones a little while to get used to it. It took him a while to get used yeah. to it, yeah. uh, but when he did, it was great. Um, it, again, all of these like basketball reasons were why. Just looking at the stats or looking at the um, kind of recruiting rankings that everybody did. Which, by the way, I think Painter said that he got Lance Jones because he his coach was used to be a high school coach. His coach at Southern Illinois used to be a high school coach and Painter recruited someone from that high school. It's like this is how this is this is how you run a pro run a state school program. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. and he was like, look, take a look at Lance Jones. I think he's yeah. what you're looking for. Yeah. On the court there are all these reasons. This team outside of Lance was, I think, too serious. They, I think there was, right. a risk, there was a risk that they... Very well put, Anish. I've been thinking about this. The business, business-like attitude was almost over the top at times, and right? Like a lot of us were even saying, and I, I think, Boyodad, you were saying this on the quick cast. I know Newbert was saying this. It was like, are they even enjoying it? Like, are they right. even having fun? And it's right. like, you know that they are. Right. But they took that 16 seed loss so hard that... It, it, that there was a risk of coming into the season the way that we thought that they would, which is completely joylessly, and like you know, com like you know, completely uh, like over serious, think overthinking everything too much, and that's the other side of when Lance Jones is like, um, you know, kind of the perfect addition because one, he was hungry. He wanted the success. He wanted the stage. You could see that he wasn't afraid of, you know, afraid of that big stage or afraid of any of those moments and wasn't going to stop shooting. But also he was joyful. I mean, he lost his father over the summer and the whole team went to his father's funeral. He still remained joyful. He still remained positive. He still remained like a light. And it seemed like... I mean, like when when everybody was going in after they won the Sweet Sixteen game against Gonzaga, there was like a clip, or maybe it was the Final Four game against NC State. Like the only one that was going into the um, you know the tunnel celebrating was Lance Jones, and it's like that's needed. Like that kind of spark is like that joy is like absolutely kind of um, you know uh, is needed. So it's like yeah, it it it, it um, I don't know. Like I, it, it's great. I, I, I think it was perfect to have. I like these are the things you trust Painter for. Yeah, yeah. He, he's earned it. He's earned it. Um, I don't know what to do with these audio comments, by the way. <laughs> so, like, I just tried to make a small adjustment. I don't know if it worked. I don't understand. We have I think such. He's trying to say. I think he's trying to say you're loud. That's what he was. Saying. I'm always loud, but You're but I, I literally I went in. And I'm like, okay, I'm not. I'm not. My this isn't even a microphone. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> This is right. just... You guys can hear me states away. So, um, yeah. Were you loud at so, the game? Were you loud at the championship game? Does everyone know? Uh, I got the most loud yelling at that damn official. I got to tell you, I, I was not. Rancing Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, he's, since he's we're talking really officials, he's really I'm not kidding here. I'm not being just a fan. Yeah. Explain to me how Danny Hurley can sprint onto the floor Shove. right at Purdue players, how he can jaw on the floor yeah. with Zach Eady, how he can step onto the floor and touch, push a player forward. And none of them are technical fouls. I don't understand that. If a player leaves the bench, even accidentally, like if a, right. if a scrum breaks right. out and you step over the line, it's just like the NBA, you are suspended. 
Yeah. But Greg McManus tells us the name of the official. I don't think he deserves me mentioning his name. I think he's so bad at his job. I'm so sick of knowing these refs' names. I don't care who it is. There are very few refs that I'm like that I, I want to know their names because they're they're I mean, I'm sure they're fantastic human beings that that serve little kids meals on the on the weekends when they're not officiating. I'm sure they are. Okay. So I'm not gonna take anything about away from their person. Just talking, about their job. Job. Just talking about they suck at their job. And there are a lot of really good people that are horrible at their jobs. And the, these, there are some guys that are exceptionally bad at his job, and he is up there. The display he put on during the championship, it makes everybody look bad. Obviously, he looks bad. He's a buffoon. He's a sideshow. He wants to be a sideshow. Are you show. talking about in relation to what I was just saying about Hurley? Or yes. About everything. Okay. I mean, that one, I don't even know what the hell he called where he, where he I mean, granted, Watching football or basketball in a football stadium leaves something to be desired. Okay. Oh, and there are many cool. plays I'm like, I'm trying when to lock in. When he steps on the floor, touches his player, they touches stop play because yes. they're going to call something. Right. And they say, well, we're just going to give Purdue the ball. Now, I'm happy to take a possession. However, that's a technical foul. What's the call? There's no, there's no such play where you could just say, well, that's just an exchange possession. Right. It's not. It's not a jump ball. Yeah. I don't. I it made me so damn mad. And we were trying to figure out, I'm like, okay, so there was a violation by a, a, a bench representative that led to a change of the they possession, but no technical foul. No foul. That's not what possible. What the hell? What in the hell is that? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And, and things like that do matter because – Hell yeah, they matter. Because it gives you the ball. It gives you points. It changes momentum. It would send him into more of a frenzy, which yeah. I sort of enjoy. But the constant yes. whining. The mouthing off to Zach Eady. Yeah, like, mouthing off to players. Shut well, up. Well, that, that was right after Zidi. Eady set a absolute bone-crushing screen. It was gnarly. And, and he may have gotten a little <laughs> extra in. Oh, well. Fine. Oh, well. But, but but then it's basketball. Hurley's coming out, and you know he's he's way out on the court, and he's right. telling the official, he's complaining to the official. I will stay. He did yeah. not start talking to Edie. He was complaining to the official, and Edie's going by and clearly says something like it was a screen coach. Like I'm sure he said something like, I'm sure he didn't say anything egregious. I'm sure he said Greg Doyle, who I don't really trust as a journalist anymore. I'll be <laughs> honest. And 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 the reason I don't trust him as a journalist is he said things that were false. In the very recent, but don't get off track. What, what, I'm, I'm now excited. What were you going to say? He said what? He said that Hurley did address Edie with an expletive and pointed at him, at, pointed at the floor about the the pick, about the screen. Oh well, then all the more reason. I'm glad Edie did say because and Doyle's account. The reason he says he could hear it, he says I was in the front row, and I could I could see it and hear it. So I'm like, okay. I don't I don't really read Doyle anymore. I, I, I used to really like him, but I'm telling you, uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into that too much. That He did say that, though, and and I was told. When, when someone sends me a link, and I know, Jay, you and I have actually talked about this recently, certain links you don't want to open, read, whatever, but somebody that I trust sends me a link, and they tell me why. I'm like, I'll give it a, I'll give it a whirl, but I'm going to go in with my built-in bias. Like, if you sent me something, because we talked about Dockage. Dockage had that. April Fool's joke that I'm, cons I'm absolutely, that's the way I looked at it, right? <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, that, that's the program to admire, Purdue's the program of the state. I was like, it was released on April 1st. He never Get gave lost. a disclaimer. That's my opinion. He did Get his. Lost. Get lost, Grifter. Get We're the not hell out of here. Even no, if you are the same guy. Exactly. <laughs> don't care. So, yeah, I don't care. But what Hurley did, according to Doyle, is that he dressed it. He dressed. Oh, that's he, even worse. That's even worse. <laughs> so, that's. I, I don't, and and everyone just acts like, you know, so funny, and you quirky, know, look, right. he just like that's that's what it acts like. They act passion. like he's quirky, right? Passion. He's quirky. He's passionate. He's a jackass. He's a jerk. He's a great coach, and he's a jerk. I, think, I mean, okay, like again, let's get this out of the way for everybody. Purdue did not lose because of the officials. Purdue no. did not lose no. because of anything. No, we started Man. off by saying Connecticut's very good, much better. very good. Purdue here. Let's let's go to the next step. Purdue is the second best team in America. I said this in my post game. Purdue is the second best team in America. Most metrics agree they're second or third. Houston at the end of the season was injured, so that puts Purdue up. Purdue is the second best team in America. If It's a three-team race all year, according to pollsters, according to metrics. It's a three-team race. So Purdue is the second best team in America. They, they ran into the first best team in America, and they cleaned their clock because their guards are that much better. That's it. Those, those UConn 
the the four that aren't um uh the funny thing is their fifth player who got overshadowed by the best player in America who was the best player on the court he's also very very good he's going to the NBA right so they have they have three or four guys outside of Klingon that are incredible and not only are they incredible they are relentless they are physical they are well gnarly there. The whole coaching uh, discipline. The well coached discipline. discipline. That, I mean, like what a mix of intensity and discipline. You don't see that. You see teams that are that are mean and like out of control. Like Tennessee is a little bit of this. They're gonna play yes. physical, they're gonna rough you up. They can't pull it back. It's all gonna be physical. Well, it's it all works gonna be rough a lot. Works a yeah. lot. Right. It doesn't work against a disciplined team like Purdue. Well, so yeah. so like part of this also is that um the people that kind of parachuted in and only watch the national title game and then give their comments, it's, right. it's very funny because yeah. you can really tell, um, like, yeah. especially for those of us who watched Purdue this closely all year, mm-hmm. um, the game plan to stop Purdue is exactly what Dan Hurley did. Absolutely. Right. It was to stay home on the three point shooters. Right. Stay tight on That's the three point shooters. Exactly. Give Edie all the space that he wants to work and trust that, you know your your offense can can live can float against that. Honestly, Klingon was like a sacrificial lamb because they said we're going to go man most of the game, and so, you're going to have to hold your own. And he, he can't. Like so, no, so Edie was scoring on him, but their guys up front are so long and yeah. so athletic and so technically sound. I, I watching the game again. I don't know what you can do as yeah. Purdue as they stand. To overcome that, you needed a you needed an A plus game from Purdue and yeah, a B yeah. game from UConn. Yeah. And yep. I mean, there's a re- it's not rocket science. Like that was the way to yeah. stop Purdue all season, and nobody could do it because nobody could stay home on the guards like that. Nobody could stop the you know be physical enough. Nobody brought like right, no all looks. American defenders off of the bench. Nobody was as disciplined. Like there is a reason that only yeah. UConn could do that to Purdue. I, right? I thought that that kind of loss would happen like the FDU loss where Purdue shot terribly yeah. and they didn't even, now they shot one of seven or yeah, one, one of nine seven, from but deep, that doesn't count. but, like but it, whatever it was, like it doesn't count as a bad shooting because they only put up a, they like shoot. that. Yeah. They didn't shoot. That's what I never would have anticipated. Yeah. That they wouldn't even take shots. Well, in the pre- in the pregame podcast, I said like one of the th- when Michael asked like what are the three things that you want? I wanted TKR to get more usage, and I just right. wanted them to shoot. Right. Yes. I go down swinging. You said go down swinging, and it's right. not. And the reason why I think you know, uh, Jay Money, you kind of brought this up at the beginning. Um, and shout out to uh, one of our listeners, Rahul, for uh, finding us, finding like our table at AJ's. Shout out to AJ's. Um, and uh, hang in for the second half. Um, the I wasn't even mad because it was like it was just so perfectly executed. They yeah. like, and it was like if you're a basketball fan, it's like watching a team execute like that. And also, like Zach Eady didn't embarrass himself. Like I think I mean like he 37 well, and 10. It, he's the best player in the country. It's same thing happened on the women's side, right? Like Caitlin Clark came out of the gates swinging, and then all yeah. of a sudden, South Carolina is just ten deep. It's better, you know. I'm gonna, I mean? I'll say something here, and and, and I, I think it's a, a big positive for the game of basketball, not a positive for Purdue. And I don't. I'm not even trying to put down Purdue. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say, let's see, you've got three starters. Three starters are sophomores on Purdue. True yeah, right. sophomores. Okay, that means, in my opinion, these guys are going to continue to get better. Okay, you have two guys that start on Cincinnati or on Cincinnati on UConn that are 24, 25 years old. Okay, Spencer, yes, that's Spencer. only part of their 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 story, though. Yes. These guys aren't just old; they're really good. Okay, I I know that I know that Newton was on every All American list. Like he made what yeah. was he second team? I think. Um, yeah, I just watching him on offense, kind of you know. Um, Kind of, uh, uh, steer everything and yeah. watching him defend Braden Smith, like just like I'm just so impressed with him. Again, right. I think most outstanding players should have gone to Zach because the definition of most I agree. outstanding and I, player. I, I thought the same thing was Zach when they brought out who the, the, I and I'm like how, who I, and I looked at his numbers for the tournament. I'm like, I mean, like, and he was he's good. Yeah. He's a good player. He was, the he most outstanding good. player in the tournament, no question, was Zach. He was, he was the most good. outstanding yeah, player exactly. in the in the championship. Was Zach? And again, I say, again, we say this again, very similarly sure. to all of the sure. comments in the past. Like 
Tristan Newton was incredible. It's that great. dude is going to have 10 years in the NBA. Yeah. Cam Spencer is going to have years in the NBA. Um, the, the Castle is going to play in the NBA. I but he's young. He's, he's, he's the young. one that I'm he's like, young. if you had some other, like a lot of teams are building on, you know, one and done, two and done type guys, right? Like Kentucky, right? Where you've got, okay, these guys are dangerous. They're talented, whatever. But that wasn't you. What UConn had, UConn had a complete team. They're starting five. The thing is, the the the, the problem they had is the guys off the bench weren't complete players yet. They're kind of like Purdue's guys, where you're like, oh, they're going to be really good. But right now, they're only kind of good. The starting five is freaking great. And so the whole thing you look at is you have Purdue players who are getting there versus UConn players who are there. Oh, I, there are a lot of people in the comments saying they disagree with the idea that UConn is that much better, I guess, oh, or that no, Purdue no, could have no. done it. Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can say whatever you want. Maybe the game would have been closer. Yeah. Okay. If UConn plays that well, Purdue's not catching them regardless of what they do to scheme. It might be a close game. And I can tell you, here's the thing, guys. And, and – if if Purdue loses that game on it loses a one possession game versus UConn, okay, but plays their absolute best, but lose a one possession game, we all would be wrung out, destroyed by it because we'd be like, damn it, that close, that close, that close, right there. The the national title is right there. Instead, we can have a little bit of peace about us. We said. Purdue ran into the best team in the nation that showed they're the best team in the nation, and they showed us a couple things. What can Purdue get better at? That, to me, is the takeaway. And Painter Holy will, moly. Painter will yes. use that. Well, I mean, Look like, what you guys can be. Right. You can do this. They were, yep. they were saying length and athleticism. Oh, yeah. by the way, look at our freshman class that's coming in. Look at Heidi that's going to – I mean, like, I completely agree. I think he's going to take a leap next year. Yeah. TKR is going to be a bruiser down yeah. low like he's gonna yeah. be a lot of fun so it's like this team has that to that point again i don't want to move off of you just yet because the other point of this and again i think dan hurley is embarrassing i don't <laughs> like it i don't like him i don't really like the way he gets down he does not seem like a bad person like you know like he does you know what i mean like he's not rick patino um but he seems like <laughs> I, you know, no, Rick Pitino's no. next level stuff. Exactly, but like he, I, his style is not what I enjoy. Right? It was like right. a complete clashing of styles the way that right. they ran it. However, there's a similarity in the way that they run their program. In that last year, Donovan Klingon was really kind of an off the bench like gadget player, right. and then this year he was the centerpiece. Yeah. Stefan Castle was a five star consensus top ten player, and he came to UConn to come off the bench, knowing he would come off the bench. Mm -hmm. Like, first of all, that sales pitch is very similar to what Painter does, which was probably like, I'll play you if you beat out the player. If you earn it, you. Yeah. And if not, yeah. you're going to play on one of the best teams in the country, and next year we will build around you. That seems like an extremely Painter way yeah. um, you know, to recruit. And he did just that. Where Castle, again, slow start to the beginning of the year, and a great end, like a great finish to the year, and all of a sudden he looks like their centerpiece, and he looks like a lottery pick next year. You know what I mean? Right. It's like right. that type of program Damn. building, that way to kind of build it, that's the stuff that like – Again, I, Bill Self is a good coach, a, a good X's and O's coach. I have no respect for the way he program builds or the way that he overlooks things. Like, you know, the way that he runs his program. I have no respect for, for that kind of stuff. I don't think the new coaches at Duke and UNC are to the caliber of Roy and Kay, at least not yet, obviously. Right. Like, to me, like, the, the class of how you build a program is – happening in you like is happening at connecticut like dan, again it, it, not my style i don't really like him but dan hurley is like do, building like oh, i mean he's at the top of great. the sport for a reason like and so Absolutely. that's the you know like again we say all this but like it was impressive like th just the way that they you know the the way that they came up and i think i mean they i don't see any well. advantage for a purdue fan not to give them full credit oh, right yeah. Right. Like, what, do you, what do you what do you get what do you get by saying man uh Purdue's right there with them or no they're not 
UConn, UConn is, is, is head and shoulders the best. I, I, if, again, if that, like your question of if, if Purdue would have played them 10 times, like, uh, yeah, yeah, Purdue and UConn played 10 times. Two, three, Purdue right? Two or three, two, that's, three times. That's, that's, and again, that's kind of the outlier things where it's like UConn has a bad game and Purdue is hitting on all cylinders, but Purdue right. hits on all cylinders often enough that it could happen. Sure. Two, three, maybe. How about this? Times, How about this? Like, if Purdue plays them 10 times in February, Purdue may win five. Okay. Purdue plays them 10 times in March. I don't know what the hell that is that he's got them eating in in March. And right. It's, not, and it, it's, it's wild not that, how good they are. It's not the way that we usually talk about it, where Purdue regresses in March. It's that no, UConn Purdue's playing elevate. great in March. Exactly. UConn elevates. Yeah. And that right. is just like, I mean, it was impressive. And that's prob- that's why I don't think, Jay Money, you were that. that uh, that's what I mean. They didn't. Like, and I didn't think, you know, while, I, while I'm disappointed that, and somebody mentioned this in our sidebar here. Purdue got out rebounded, which surprised me a little that bit. Like a lot of things happened that that disappointed me, but it was not because Purdue didn't play. Like Purdue stuck to their game plan the entire game, and and Painter talked about it afterwards. Almost, I mean, I might question that a little, but I don't know, you know, a fraction of what a real coach knows. But like he said, our plan was to get it into Eddie, and if they were going to let us do that, then we were going to keep doing that. And then and then obviously the part that didn't happen was he then kicks it out to open shooters, and there were not. Right. So that's the thing that like you, you take what the defense gives you when the defense gives you the best player in the country one on one, you take what usually becomes right. a one point two points per possession kind of, right. you know, thing. That's that. That's that analytics side of painter, like saying, OK, look, th- this is the by far the most efficient way to play basketball for us. Right. Yeah. And it was, yeah. and if the you'd have regrets were, if he had 13 points and you didn't get it into him yeah. enough, you'd have regrets then. I mean, mm-hmm. and you know, the the other part of this is that the if you look at it, the the and again, not comparing it, but like the FDU loss, you just look at some of the you know the the highlights. It was the complete opposite. They were just yeah. crashing four on Edie. Edie still had yes. twenty five points or whatever. That was the it difference. Was, that was a bad yeah. shooting night. Exactly. That was not that they played. FDU did not play great. They did the only thing they could do. Yeah. And it worked. You have to gamble that one thing. As we said earlier in this, you every, has many things they can do. Every team knows the formula. You okay. decide what you're going to do with Edie, and then you right. hope they don't shoot well. Which, right. by the way, let's let's move to the man. It's the last time. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, the last the last one to honor. Yep. I mean, like, how much of a privilege? I get. See, there are players like like you know like in the nba like kevin durant like lebron like steph curry where it's like it it feels stupid because this is basketball but you say like it's a privilege to be alive right now to like yeah. watch this happen like because i love basketball and this is about those three play basketball about as well as any human could possibly play it right mm-hmm. in the college game seeing zach Eady, like kind of mature the way that he has we were talking about what his first game Jay, did you say he had 18 points in his first game or something, something like, that? like that? And like, yeah. I mean, like, he we all expected gate. him. I think everybody expected him to redshirt his freshman year. Everybody expected him to come off the bench behind Trevion Williams his sophomore year. And nobody expected a player of the year coming his junior year, right? right. And it's just like, I mean, what a like rare gift we got. To root, and that's why, like, I was rooting. I, I was kind of clapping in AJ's for like those last garbage time buckets that Edie did. Yeah. You know why? Because I'll never get to do that again. Right. I'll never get to see the greatest Purdue basketball player kind of, you know, throw down dunks like late in the national championship ever yeah. again. <clears throat> like, and that was awesome. It was incredible. He took us to the final four. He took us to the national championship. He won back to back players of the year, not just back to back Naismiths. First time since um, Ralph Sampson, he swept every, every national player of the year award, award yeah, for, for the first years. time since Bill Walton in the 70s. And so it's like, this is the guy. It, like, and he did it. He took Purdue, he took Gene Cady's program over the hump. And like, to me, it's like that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. He, 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 he did something that it, it's uh, hopefully it's a, it was a fulcrum, right? Where you're like, okay, now post Edie. This team understands what it takes to, to get there, right? We've all, all three of us, for a long time, have talked about, like, let's go back pre-Carson Edwards. I said, you know, I believe, I don't think I'm giving myself too much credit that I said Carson Edwards was a guy that was the type of mentality you need to win in March, and then it happened, right? And he's the type of ta- talent and temperament, right? 
And generally the formula is that ball dominant guard in March. That's the thing, right? Purdue used a different formula. I said this, they used an old fashioned formula, a formula that really doesn't make sense in college basketball. And it still worked because Edie's that generational. Edie absolutely carried Purdue when Purdue couldn't shoot versus that was in was NC state that they didn't shoot well. Right. Yeah. Um, so like th that's a, that's a, that's a major deal, right? When Purdue would go cold, it was oh, easy. That would, they didn't shoot well. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Um, and then uh, the funny thing is versus UConn, he had about a four minute stretch where I don't know if he was tired or what was happening. He couldn't hit the stuff he usually hits. Yeah. Yeah. He regretted it. He talked about it in his post game. Right. And here's the other thing. Let me let me tell you something about all the stuff. Like this is there's still these little bonus videos that are still percolating up. The collective put out a thank you note to the Purdue family, in which Edie, anybody that bad mouths this kid, like like you know you're gonna find these hands right. We, we've talked about this. This makes me mad to the middle. But that video again, it's like okay, listen how grateful this kid is. That, that is not normal stuff. And that is, I, I always say that's the key to life. Staying grateful to other people, staying grateful to your parent, your, your, your situation, staying grateful to the things that are around you. Cause you like, you feel blessed to be there. Right. Lance Jones is one of those guys, but Edie, what did he say? He said, I feel lucky to, for, to have pain as a coach and I, I can't repay him. I can't repay him. I, I still owe him so much. And I still owe you guys, Purdue fans so much. For giving me the chance to become what I became. That type of stuff, I'm like, okay, here we go again, right, Anish? Every 12 hours or so, you're going to watch something that's going to get your emotions up, right? Where you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna ball doesn't if I it, – Doesn't that remind you a little bit of the Drew B's perspective? Just remember, yeah. Drew, Drew's always felt like he owes Purdue. Yeah, Purdue. For giving yeah. him a chance, which yeah. is crazy because we all felt like we owed him for what he did right. for us. Yeah. And I feel like it's very similar where yeah. they both said a lot of the same things. This place gave me a chance. They believed in me. And then they turned into, you know, the greatest, uh, you know. Well, the, the major thing you can, and you hear Edie's tone in that, uh, it's not bullshit. That's no. the best thing. This oh, isn't no. some guy trying to tell you what he thinks he wants you to hear. This no. is somebody telling you exactly what he thinks. Yeah. Yeah. It's it. That's why it's like I savored kind of every time we heard all of the same stories, kind of over and over again. Because it is like in addition to just him being kind of you know a singular basketball talent, like his story is incredible, like absolutely incredible. And so it's like we, that's things. Those are things that yeah we make fun of it because we hear the same things every single game. But like it. It, it deems repeating because it's miraculous. Like even if there's one new person that hears it every time that it's repeated, it's worth it. It's worth kind of saying, because that doesn't happen. Like you're not supposed to play seven years of organized basketball in your life. <laughs> and two of them, you're the best player in the country. You know what I mean? Like that just doesn't happen. So ridiculous. Like, or the Go ahead. Was saying like his his attitude comes from the fact that he was the four. We say he was the 435th recruit. That basically means he was just there. Like, right. you know, he existed and he went to IMG. And so it's like, ah, eh, whatever. Like it, my favorite thing right now. And you've, it, you probably heard it in the last week leading up to the championship. There's a lot of time in there for the, the lemmings to be out, you know, squawking. But one thing they're like, yeah, he went to IMG and you're calling him a guy who was underrated. I'm like, yeah, he was the backup at IMG. And if you, this isn't like a, a contrived story by Purdue fans, just go look at two, four, seven and see what they say about him as a recruit. Then just go look at some videos of him playing. I mean, That's the thing. The, the, the tape tells the story how different he was. I mean, like he was trying to be mean and strong and dominant, but he wasn't then. He didn't know how he to was, focus he it. He didn't, tall. he hadn't, he hadn't gotten there. Right. He was seven feet tall and anybody, people who are, you know, make that kind of comment. If you're seven feet, you're going to get a look, but yeah. he was, but he was, but he was raw. And, and, yeah, I, I the thing that I was going to bring up is uh, you mentioned it earlier that I, I had looked at today at the stats and he had um, five of his first six games he was in double figures, and the only I brought this up to you guys too. I don't know if people know this. He only fouled out of one game in college, and it was the fifth game he played when they lost to Miami 
Florida, Miami in uh, December of 2020. I, I think see. it's awesome that Purdue was able to pay every official in America just enough to keep this favoritism going. Michael had one years. of the best responses to somebody saying that. He said, ah, yes, the NCAA fixing things for ratings juggernaut Purdue. <laughs> exactly. Ratings juggernaut Purdue. And for a seven foot four guy, because that's the story that every person in America thought when he's a freshman, man, let's invest in a big man because that's the way the game's going. Come on, guys. It's, it's, it's just like, it's crazy. He, Painter always talks about like he doesn't have that um, kind of inbuilt thing that a lot of players of the year have because he wasn't recruited like that. It was right. basically Baylor and Purdue that were recruiting them. What's funny is that um, I don't think he would have developed like he would have at Baylor, but he, you know, he, he would have been a part of a national championship team, um, yeah. you know, and Scott Drew kind of won it. But he, he was the engine that took Purdue to a national championship. So, you know, it's like, um, it seems like everywhere he would have gone, he would have found success. Um, but I'm glad it was with us. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that Julia Edie was on one shining moment. Like I'm glad that, that was awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because I needed to transition to one shining moment most years. So the way I usually handle one shining moment, first of all, CBS and TBS, do they drag that shit out making you wait for it? Or like, Enough. We don't have to go back to the desk for some other banality from Chuck about something stupid. You know why we're all still watching it. Didn't so do you think, so let me ask you a question. So there's two ways I look at this. I've looked at it for a long while. One is that the, they have to edit the video. Like they've cut the whole thing except the championship night. Okay. So, so, it, so you think it's not there. It's not production. They're not putting the, oh, no, the final is. touches on it. They are. You think this is like a used car salesman going back to talk to his, his manager. <laughs> we're going to build the drama here. This There's is going to, we're, we're going to, we're going no, no, to, they do have to, they do have to cut in the championship game highlights and them holding up the, and program. there weren't that many this year, by the way, that's the thing that was, but most of the video was set. They, they, I, and if I were a UConn fan, I'd be a little let down. Like, damn it, you guys didn't give us the floor. Well, Sometimes just, the whole video – I mean, we've seen it in the past where they put way too much championship, way too much Final yes. Four into it. And I wanted that. I was like, please be I, – I need more Final well, Four. I, what I, I wanted to say Purdue, is – Purdue probably got 30 seconds out of the three Purdue got minutes. Some, we've joked over the years that Purdue is often just not even featured at all. And and the, the joke I made on Twitter a few years ago was Purdue can make the Final Four and not be in – not be in one shining moment. And then, so I was eagerly waiting for it. Usually I wait till the next day. Cause I'm like, I want to go to bed. I don't care. And I just go to YouTube because you don't right. need, and there's always people on Twitter. Just show me one shining moment. Just watch it on YouTube tomorrow. Like, It'll be fine. You're right. So anyway, I did stay up and I've watched it since when Anish brought it up again, I've watched it several more times since. And you guys talked about the stuff that makes you get choked up. Yeah. That is the one for me is watching the, the clip I sent to you guys just where they, they have the cut of, I don't know if it's Kevin Harlan or somebody saying Purdue's going to the final. Yeah, that's so good. I'm like, every time I watch that clip and it's Edie, or it's Julia it's, Edie excited and then it's the hugging Painter. Oh, not, that like, I've, not that I've memorized this, but for the first time in 44 years, the final four <laughs> includes Purdue. I, that, that was the line. Put that on your t-shirt and I will buy it. Uh, speaking of, I'm begging all of you, all of you stores, anybody that works in a store, anybody that shops at a store, anybody that breathes in the same vicinity that any of these stores are, please, please restock your things. Like, I, we were all waiting for, hey, just in case Purdue wins a national championship, we might need to get a whole new set of, you know, uh, apparel. Now we know that the Final Four stuff is the stuff to buy. Please, I'm begging you to give you thousands of dollars. I would, I would. Delighted. And he's not joking, guys. <laughs> he spent an entire afternoon hunting Final Four apparel in Indianapolis. Uh, it's beautiful. Is that I mean, true? Was it like yeah. two, three hours where you were looking? I mean, like I was looking online and then I was kind of driving around from store yeah. to store because I was yeah. in Indy. And so I was like, you know, I want to see what you have locally instead of yeah. kind of the, the online stuff. But it's like restock it. I'm begging you to take exactly. my funds. It's very, very, very simple, easy money. I, I think there's one thing we – Purdue fans, you go. Um, okay. Okay. Um, but the, the one thing is that Purdue fans showed they're willing to put their money where their mouth is during this past couple weeks. Purdue fans showed up over and over and over at different places. And then they went and they spent money. We said, we joked around as we were walking away from the stadium that I bet those bar owners really wanted Purdue to win because it would have been live in that, uh, West gate oh area. Gosh. Oh my gosh, man. I, I I'm sure the they're like, gate? dang it. Was it the West gate? 
Uh, yeah, the West Bank. It was it was not the West Bank, in spite of what some dumbass. Did you, you catch that on his no. quick? <laughs> Is that what you did? You say that on your? Podcast? Yeah, I did. I did, and I quickly <laughs> caught it, and I quickly made fun of myself because I was like, ah, I loved it so much the way you yeah, because yeah, you just did the because I felt so stupid as I was saying it. <laughs> it's as it's natural. coming out of my mouth. I'm like, oh no. The Jews flee fled <laughs> out of the desert and exactly. <laughs> Arizona. Right to the closest bar. Exactly. Yes. It's all the same. They yes. uh, shouldn't have named it so close for morons like me that they even thought. Well, but but you're right. That would have been uh I can't imagine. None of I us mean, I went to campus, that. like I was ready. I had my I had my uh hotel room booked. I was ready on campus and like, you know, it was it got crazy after NC State. Like it was awesome. I wanted to kind of be there. Like if I couldn't go to the Final Four, like that's always even, you know, for me, like, I'd, I'd almost rather be on campus than, like, unless the Final Four is in Indy, right? Um, but, like, you know, um, though, when you sent the picture, uh, Doubt, of, of the, you know, where you were, and actually, like, I thought you're, for, for a football stadium, like, I thought your seats were pretty good. Like, I don't know if that was just... Well, they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not bad, because, like, we could see the game, we could see the ball. <laughs> It's good, but you, you you're a long, long way away, yeah, yeah. and they really need a big board there just to tempt you to look up and actually see what you can. So you can leave no doubt because there are some things you can't see yeah. in a football stadium. You just can't see them, and I tried so hard to really, really focus as hard as I could do it. I couldn't. <laughs> I was squinting. <laughs> I squint hard. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Um, and what I I had learned is that. Uh, when it's in Indianapolis and Purdue's playing in the Final Four next time, is that I'm going to, um, because I don't have to pay for a hotel that time, I'll pay extra for tickets. And you know what else I'm going to do? Next time, in if it if next year goes looks like a growth year, like I think it's going to, it's going to be a ton of fun. And we're going to see these guys figure themselves out. Early, you'll see, whoa, okay, these guys are better than we thought. And then as they start to gel, we'll just start to see them come together. And they win, I don't know, 23 to 25 games next year. We'll all be like, hmm, that tasted good. You know what I may do? I may go ahead, as soon as they release tickets in Indianapolis, I may just go ahead and nut up and buy them. Because I, I thought, okay, I'm the problem. I shouldn't buy anything in advance. Guess what, Ryan? You're not the problem. None of that matters. Here's the thing. It's all about the individuals that are playing the game. I know we all like to be the superstitious ones. I am extremely guilty of saying, okay, I should never buy refundable pick, uh, airfare. I should never buy refundable tickets because I'm going to screw it up. Hey, everybody, I got to tell you, you're not going to screw it up at anything I, for Purdue. But I think it's less. Yes, there are people who feel that way. I don't look at it I'm that, that guy, way. but I, but I don't look at it that way. I look at it like this. If you do that and then they disappoint you, which not that that's ever happened as a Purdue fan, but if they no, were to disappoint no. you, now you have the added burden of dealing with getting rid of them and you're already pissed off. I'm not saying you caused that. I understand that. I understand now that. you're like, oh, frick, now I got to get rid of these I, things. And we've been right. in that spot before. Right. We, you were talking about it, I think, um, after either in the post game or maybe it was kind of on our sidebar um, chat. But Gary Parrish does his top 25 and one every day. Yeah. Um, and he has Purdue ninth. Uh, basically, he has Purdue and UConn in the bottom half of the top 10 because they're Purdue and UConn. And like, right. because it's, you know, what do you call it? A faith and, pick? Am I getting that right? And that absolutely. what he said? Absolutely. And like, yeah. I think, you know, even in a lot of kind of preseason top 25s, I don't think that I've seen Purdue. Um, you know, lower than like 11. I, I can't believe that. I mean, like it's when respect, I say I can't man. believe it, like the most, it. it is total respect for Painter. Painter. Yep. It's, it's, the, gonna, it's what everybody was yes. dying. We didn't even have to win the championship. I mean, it we been talked nice. about that. They had prepared a seat for him among the coaches that they, they want to put him up there. Right. And now you have even more of a reason to put him up there. Well, Obviously the, those pressers did so much good for Painter's brand. Among national media types, the people that really listen, the people that actually write down the quotes and then use them in articles, they're like, wow, this guy's really, really good, right? And then the next thing, getting to the final four, that's that threshold, okay? Jay, one thing I wanted to follow up on your point a minute ago before you left and came back um, was <laughs> – that always weirds me out whenever people disappear. Goodbye. <laughs> Adios. Um and then I feel like I missed something you guys had talked about. Like, oh, Jay's going to disappear or something. I'm done. He's gone. Because that's what Michael does to us all the time. He appears and disappears. Um, but one thing that got me is when they said, you know, like you said, Purdue is going to their, what would you say, first time in 44 years, Purdue is going to the Final Four. For me, whenever someone would say, 
the national cha- championship between Purdue and UConn, or Purdue is going to the national championship. Any, I was like, okay, Purdue and national championship. I can't be right. <laughs> yeah, intentionally in the same sentence. <laughs> Whatever, man. Whatever. It that that got me, man. How about this? You know what else got me? The national anthem being played before the game. Oh, I bet. That's it. Because it's the national anthem before the national championship. I was like, okay, this is this is a seeing your team be introduced. My team being introduced. They were all lined up on the sidelines. And oddly enough, Nike said, you know what? We're going to do that stupid thing we do sometimes where everybody's going to dress alike. Both teams wearing pretty much the same warm-up. Great job, Nike. I miss the old days where Purdue had a warm-up and the other team had a warm-up and there's some character there. Yep. I understand why they did that. Make you feel special. They could have done this better, though. Could have done it better. But Nike decided not to. But it was kind of cool looking, I will say that, when they're all lined up on the side. All of them in the same uniform, in the same warm up. That was kind of cool and kind of weird. Uh, We're all on the same team for a second, guys. <laughs> I don't know. By the way, you missed, I don't know if they showed it on TV, a, a, a halftime show that I was like, what is happening? Like, it, I understand what, it, what you, you guys saw a preview of it. Oh, was it the lady on the unicycle, whatever? No, I wish. It was the bowl runner. Come on now. It was, it was, it was a, um, it was a, uh, different Indian tribes doing song and dance. And I'm like, I can really get into that stuff if it's good. But I'm like, man, some of this was really bad and really forced. And you're literally on the second biggest stage this the state of Arizona is going to get. I'd say Super Bowl in their mind is a bigger stage because it's international and it's mm-hmm. even more people coming in. But I was like, wow, this is this is forced. This is not very good. And it's and I I, I looked around, everybody left. Everybody went to go someplace else. And I stayed in my seats because I hate crowds. So I'm like, I'm here. Uh, so that was my me. Yeah. yeah, entertain me. Give me give me Frisbee dog. So I, I'm not trying to put those people down saying they're not as good as Frisbee dog as a person. That's not <laughs> it. Okay. The Frisbee dog is fun. So that's it. It's just next time play free bird is what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, it was, it was. Could have done better. So, Could've so for like, next year. So, uh, oh, yeah. really quickly, like on your on your painter uh, respect point that Jay uh, here, I just want to like one of the things that people were saying was like Danny Hurley has kind of stamped his way into the fi- in the Naismith Hall of Fame because like two championships. And yeah, it seems like he's no got going. Like, so he should retire. Exactly. Should. But then what I also heard was like, hey, Matt Painter is probably in the Hall of Fame. He's probably a little bit more borderline of a case, but he made a Final Four, and it like they kept talking about him like a like in the Hall of Fame. a different level of Hall of Fame coach. And it's like, oh, okay, so it's now not just Purdue fans saying this. Like Matt Norlander said, hey, you know, like, who's a big like Purdue? He, lo- he loves Painter. He loves Painter. Loves Norlander and Parrish both kind of love love Purdue, yeah. but um, yeah. you know, they're both like Matt Painter is a future Hall of Fame coach, and I think Norlander said that. Uh, Painter is already the the greatest basketball coach in Purdue history, um, and so it's like I again I don't think he's quite there yet. He, if he if his career he's going to be by every number like, too. exactly like yeah. give it give it give it time five more years there. four more years. Um, um, and so anyway, hey, wanna, somebody had a, how many? Jay. Go ahead, you go, Jay. I was just going to say I want to talk about I do want to talk a little bit more about Painter uh, and okay. next year, but a couple people on the side there brought up the Terry Crews segment before the game. Now, I, I didn't that, see you, this. You didn't I see this. Uh-oh. It was so bizarre. It was a network doing what they do where they're like, let's try something different. And they brought both teams to some sort of soundstage, it looked like. Okay. The actual teams. It wasn't uh-huh. like people. At okay. first, I, thought, All right. I thought at first it was just like maybe people in Purdue uniforms that like they would just show yeah. like a glancing shot, you know, and yeah. you'd be like, it's not really them. It was them. And Terry Crews, you know, Terry Crews, who was in like the Expendables, the, you know, like, yeah, he's up there. Giving a motivational speech. The big them. strong guy, right? Ball headed yeah, guy. Strap. Yeah. He can move his uh, pecs. Yes. Right? He's giving a speech things. to them about like perseverance and and how this is the biggest state, as though they don't know they're on the. And 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 he's t- then he tells a story. You know what? Now I want to play in this game. I was thinking about sitting. It, in it was ridiculous. And I'm all I could think of was these players are probably all like, I can't believe we have to stand here and look. Like we give a shit what this guy is telling us who he tells a story about how in the high school championship game, he stole the ball and had a breakaway down a point and he laid it in and it bounced out. And I was like, that was, that was terrible. Why are you telling us this? Right. It was so weird. It was so strange. And, yeah. and it wasn't like it was a few seconds. It was like right. a very long piece. 
We yeah. we didn't uh, we we were I think watching something else at AJ's I think uh, you know oh, you didn't uh, get to see this friend. either we didn't see the uh, Terry find it. and then afterwards Adam turned the channel and we started watching Titanic I, I knew was Titanic fitting, was on I was hit the guide fitting. button and it showed Titanic was on the whole night of the final four and I actually remembered that and then you put up a picture of you guys watching it <laughs> and then so it's like, like we went down with the ship we went down with the ship. And like like you said that you said that and I meant it right and I think you guys are right there with me. You sell out everything, you do it again, and you go down with the ship over and over and over. You the do best, not. I mean, like it. It um, by almost every measure the best season in Purdue history. And again, you yeah, want to make fun yeah. of national championships and stuff like that. It is what it is. Like Purdue's one of the back. most successful teams in college basketball. <laughs> but it's like it is. It happens. Did you hear what he just said to me? No. I said, I'll never let go, Zach. I said, I'll never let go, Zach. <laughs> uh, we went um, down with the ship. I want oh, to enjoy good. every – I want us to pledge to – I know we're going to enjoy next year because we the expectation is not a Final Four, and it's just going to be fun to see this team be fast and and get better and this talent come in. But there's two things that I keep thinking about for next year. One, I don't think they're going to go to the Final Four, but – don't you think Braden Smith is going to be a really tough out in the NCAA oh, yeah. tournament? Oh, yeah. He's going to be the kind of guy where you're like, gosh, it's hard to beat that guy. He's he's sure? going to will them to a, at least one win. Maybe Are you they sure they're not going to an Elite Eight? Are you sure? I'm not sure they're not going to an Elite Eight. I didn't say that. I'm saying their second weekend. It's really hard. That round of 16 starts getting really difficult. It def- definitely does. But I think they're in the round of 16 next year. I feel like this team now knows exactly mm. what to do. And the other thing I want us to do, I was starting to say, is let's enjoy all the times Purdue just smoke somebody who thought they were going to get worse. Like when they sweep Illinois next year, it's going to be even more fun. Like when they beat Michigan ooh, State. Ooh, ooh. Can I ask you guys an opinion question? Because I thought this was a fun Please. thought exercise. Hawkins. He's in the portal. A lot of people are bringing this up. I think this is fun. And like, I think it's fun because, so my son, we sat down to dinner. He said, would you, would you take Hawkins? Is it? <laughs> I know, I know Purdue didn't have room. I know this is all imaginary. I know this is fun. Would you take Hawkins? And I'm like, okay, listen, I do not like Hawkins. Let me just say, I'll be very clear about that first, okay? I don't think he's as bad of a guy as I was making him out to be. I think he's actually kind of a funny provocateur. I really mean that, okay? He's obnoxious. He's a jackass. He's young. He's 20-something, whatever, okay? Who knows what will happen? But, but, but. I would almost take him just to see the way Illinois fans. It would be hilarious. Oh my gosh. Would it? I mean, and then that would make us love him even more, right? We'd be like, that's our guy. He left you and came to us because he doesn't like you and he loves with, with us. Final exactly. He doesn't want to just lose with coach car salesman. Um, I mean, Holy moly, would that – that would be worth its weight. If I he called little... Coach Painter, I'd be like, make room because make of that. Right. This for the entertainment value. Holy moly. I had an Illinois fan. He'd also be great with that And a loss is a loss. And if Purdue lost to Connecticut, it's just like Illinois losing. And I said, I said you're right. Losing in the title game and not giving up a 30 nothing run is exactly the same. Same. Yeah. What are okay. you talking about? A stupid like, ass. Just it's as Anisha it's, said many times over the years, there's an option. You always have the option to just, just stop. To talking. not say anything. Exactly. Just, just, just don't talk. talk. You don't need to reply. You don't, don't need. have to. So that's the other thing. It's like we are talking about us having fun with this season, this being a really memorable season, and saying, like, hey, how do we like commemorate this it's final four like oh boy what what type of banner do you put You're up gonna open final this four? up exactly and i'm I, gonna do I, some I mock-ups by the way and literally in the next tweet i'm like i don't if you have an opinion on this that and you are outside <laughs> i wasn't of asking family, for your opinion i don't care <laughs> <laughs> and obviously uh i think it right kind of co-tweeted it and uh, uh that got like a few people there obviously yeah. it got our friends down south at the program that has made Tennessee? i think i counted three sweet 16s in the last uh 25 years yeah it's like, like instead you know it's so sweet, that you know, 16s just, are nice exactly um nice. it's good for an up-and-coming program in Ooh. southern indiana Ooh. um so obviously some of those fans can it came out of the woodwork but actually the people that were the most like infuriating you'll never believe it michigan state fans michigan state fans 
Oh, they're, they're themselves pumping. into they're, a they're... conversation that they don't belong in. I'm good. Right. Thank you. No, thank you. I yeah. don't need your comments. I was not asking you. So yeah. um, we were talking about like Twitter. how to, yeah, like the 1969 banner for the men and the 20, 2001 19, banner for the no. women don't okay. indicate that they are they were the runner-up. Like they went to right. the they national championship four. game, right? Yeah, they say yeah. final four, which kind of sucks. Like there's think a, about think about the, the value of the final the elite eight win right the elite the you win the elite eight and all of a sudden you get a banner the you win the round of four game and nothing it doesn't matter because you won a regional championship in the previous I understand the idea but it's still every game in the tournament gets so I was explaining to my daughter I said theoretically these games should get harder Purdue got lucky in that they NC State went on a run and here's the funny thing though about that Cinderella a lot of times you don't want to play Cinderella as we know as Purdue fans but, but at that round you do that that, that is always that's where the wheels right. come off that's where they, that's where it, and because that's, like if you yeah. think about it as like a state thing it's like you win your regional then you go to semi-state and then you win right. then you go to state right yeah. and so it's like semi-championship <laughs> maybe that's yeah. the way we... I don't no, because like no, like the analogy I gave you guys, the I the, tried to think of a, two, uh, a way to say that. Just the like the that. 49ers aren't going to put up that they're, that they're Super Bowl runner up. They will put up that they're yeah, the NFC. Yeah, but the NFL champ. is different. But the, the NFL is different because you're winning a conference. There is no conference. You won a region. Big. I already explained but this to you. That's fine, but in the final four, that is another game. That's halfway to a like. That, that's another. Halfway there is a, to it. Jay. You're missing something though, right? Because if you earn your way into the championship, you are the AFC or NFC champ. This is the problem. You're in a dead zone in college basketball, which isn't fair. It doesn't make it equal, right? You get into the championship, there's a title for that. In college basketball, there's no title for getting into the championship. Does that make sense? It, 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 you're, you're missing a whole round without a name, which is a shame. So you Wisconsin, beat a good team to get to the championship. Put up a Wisconsin, final two banner. Yeah, Wisconsin has a national finalist final two. Um, uh, the, the final two. Terrible twos. Um, is the, <laughs> Terrific two. Wisconsin has a final four banner, and then they have a national finalist banner. Uh, right. Butler put up two national finalist banners. Right. Um, and so like all of that, it, like, I, I think that. it makes sense to honor that. I hate, like, I hate runner up. I do not hate finalist I mean, not at runner all. up, but national finalist or finalist. Yeah. Like, I don't, like, I, I, I like it a lot. Like even just like a little patch. That yes. Says, it doesn't have to be finalist. much. It doesn't have to be much, it but it has to show that. Oh, to I the like casual that. Fan that you know, I like that idea that it's a, that there's final four banners whenever you go to a final four and then there's some notation on it yeah, in exactly. some way. I'm fine with that. Cause I think the, I like the uniformity of, 69, 80, 20, 24 were all final four years because mm -hmm. that's what everyone that's where the emotion that's that's what everyone was most excited about. That's what people were crying over. Mm -hmm. Right? But but a lot of that was times, the humps. But a lot of times you look so you look up in Mackie Rafters and you see all of the Big Ten championships, you see all of the retired jer like numbers and jerseys. Mm -hmm. Like for a long time, like that is how for a, a lot of people, that is how the story of Purdue basketball. Just for clarification, Anish, I gotta stop you because people and I know you know the answer, but I just need to do it for oh, everybody. Man. Oh, man. This is it, they are not retired jerseys and numbers. No, 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 no. But you no, see, but you have to be they careful, Anish, there. because I've had people get really yes. pissy with me. Yes. Watch the tape from senior night. I said exactly he I know what mistake. happened. It's and I even replied honored. to somebody it's like a thing, they're just honoring the number honoring right. they're the honoring all Americans. Yeah. Right, and I replied and said that I said they don't retire numbers; they honor all Americans. So somebody replied to me and said it has no, nothing to do with honor all Americans. I was like, "No, what do it you think has the star is for everything to do exactly. with exactly." There's multiple stars under those guys, not because guys this I, I... year were wearing numbers that are up there. Are you that freaking Heidi's numbers up there? <laughs> like, because Heidi is is very very good. What? The... <laughs> What's wrong with people? But like, I don't know. I don't know. People, but like to yeah. me, like I don't think I think a lot of people don't know that the 1969 team played in the national title game against UCLA, like yeah. against like John Wooden's UCLA team. Like that is a story of yeah. Purdue basketball that needs to be kind of better told. I think Foreman and all of them like do a good job about it, and it again feeds into my least favorite thing in the world that we addressed earlier, which is like either you win or it doesn't matter. That's your least favorite thing in the world. It's among my least favorite. Things I mean, I can think of a lot of really, really bad things. Racism's nope. below it. No, nope. right below uh, mass murder, hungry. 
If it nope. hung, exactly. Nope. Yeah, exactly. Bad but banner hygiene. Bad banner execution is his least favorite thing. Inaccurate history. A car wreck. In sports. <laughs> this is. <laughs> Raging diarrhea. Rings culture. This is my. <laughs> Raging diarrhea. Raging my. <laughs> But this is worse, guys. This is the least. I was going to say that my band name. Least favorite. This is the number one most horrible thing there is. Correct. Um, oh, boy. It's great. And so yeah. it's like, yeah, we, it's, tell a story. Tell a story a little bit better, man. Come on. Sorry, I just thought of a Norm MacDonald joke that. I'm just thinking of more things. There's that so are, many things that are worse. Blimp disasters. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, boy. Uh, dysentery. Look at people are giving, stepping on something with wet, while wearing something oh, wet, while wearing dog. socks. No, never. How about this? What never. if you have a dog and no. you step on the carpeting that's wet from the dog yeah, while wearing yeah. socks and no, you have no, to no, leave, no. so you have to put pee socks into your shoes? That's worse. Everything else that you guys named uh, is still kind of blue. still wet still socks. no three or four. Still tolerable. Wet socks is above. Wet socks is kind of so. Oh, you do so, put wet socks yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wet oh. socks. Uh, uh, very bad. I hate wet socks. <laughs> Something wet over. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate you setting that up, Anish. That is the best, the best overspeak ever. Thank yeah. you. That's it. So good. <laughs> so good. All right. Hey guys, guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. I gotta tell you guys something. This is awesome. This is news. I can't wait. Gene Katie got to see his boilermakers go national title. And and get showered with love. Like people Yes. Conzo. Did you see the Conzo Conzo video? Oh my gosh, yeah. That was one of those that okay, here we go. Let's cry again. Thanks. (laughs) didn't think we're doing that uh he was there he knew what i mean not to sound like you know he's an old man though and he was he but he knew what was happening he was fully appreciating it like it's awesome well the funny thing in that video he looks a little like out of it and i was like oh uh, because he was getting emotional he was getting emotional he's trying to hold it together yep. and then he says you trying to make me cry so i was like yeah. that was awesome i was That's like great. okay yeah it was so good uh yeah another person that's grateful and i that's the funny thing it's in the fight song i i think i think it needs to be focused on more ever grateful if we're going to say what defines purdue what defines a purdue family all that stuff that idea of staying grateful is is let's let's keep that up front like let's let's do that as a as a group as a community just you're lucky to be where you are right this is a pretty amazing thing to to be where you are. It's pretty awesome that if you're like me, your dad brainwashed you and ended, you know, you ended up a Purdue alum. That's awesome. So, I mean, the amount of family, I told you like the, my line is third generation Boilermaker and first generation American, like all mm-hmm. of my family that was kind of Purdue adjacent were like texting me like during the games and things yeah. like that. And it's like, that's, that's fun. That's the fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked me a question earlier, a long time ago. I'm trying to go down and find. Oh, look, Shupa flies here. Um, Shupa flies here, and I'm going to read this comment real quick. It says, "My father-in-law is a first-year Boilermaker fan this season. Loved it. Converted him from professional sports because of passion at heart. Uh, we made it to Phoenix, and it was so worth it. So that is, I can tell you who this is. I'm going to do it. So that's my brother-in-law. Ken is his father-in-law." Ken was at the national championship with he was my sister. he was there. That's great. Yeah, and it was awesome. And uh, we hung out uh, in the West Gate together. <laughs> Jay, um, he loves he. You guys think I'm an extrovert and I'm good. I like to talk to people that I don't know. This guy, I mean, uh, he's so far out in front of me with that comfort. There, he will he will talk to anybody. And he will have a good conversation. And if it's not a good conversation, he'll start making fun of them, like right to their face. And maybe that's the beauty of being a couple years older than us. Um, but whatever it is, my sister-in-law put this thing together and she said, she said, she texted me during the, um, uh, what game was it? During the NC State game. She starts texting me. She said, should we go? Should we go to, should we go to Phoenix? And I start trying to give her facts. Okay. Hey. 
is a is a big stadium. The seats are not going to be great. Things are going to be expensive, but I'm going because I want to be around the carnival atmosphere. I want to be around Purdue fans doing something they've never done before. And so we're just going back and forth. And I didn't hear anything from her for a couple hours. And then I think the next day she says, we're going, we're going. And so they put a trip together and the first people we tried to see when we were in town, we went out to dinner with all them and we ran in, we went to Hus Brewing and got to meet Ben and uh, Christina who are big boiled sports people. It was awesome. And my, they could, they could vouch my, my, uh, my brother's father and brother-in-law's father-in-law. There we go. Um, was there, uh, wearing a black cowboy hat. That's kind of his signature right now. Cause he's going through chemo. He doesn't have hair right now. He says, chemo is not that bad. Jay, you would love like, <laughs> it, it sounds like he's, he's, he's making a joke at the expense of chemo. Kind of like you and I used to say, yeah, this parenting is not that hard. Yeah. Yeah. He's going through chemo. He's in Phoenix watching a, a team play that he has other than attachment to my to my brother-in-law. That's his attachment to Purdue. Mm -hmm. Boiled sports, you guys are his attachment to Purdue. Okay. And he had a great time. He he loved being around everybody. He thought, you know, I, I think he's he's been saying, yeah, I'm a Purdue fan now, but it cemented the idea that he's really a Purdue fan now. And he texted me today telling me. Yeah, I think I'm in for next season too. So I loved it. I loved it. Of course. It and is. all of you that are praying uh, for him, if you believe in the power of prayer, which I do, and the people that just think, okay, I, I'm thinking about him. I think that's all stuff that import, that's important. But this is, I mean, this is a guy that he quickly adopted Purdue, or we quickly adopted him, whatever you want to say. And he was there in Phoenix and uh, had a good time. He got upgraded because he's got a, uh, he, he has a cane. Um, so he got upgraded into better seats too. So he said, I used my disability to get better seats. So he got uh, accessible seats and they were better. He said the other seats were not very good. Uh, the, the sight lines were not great, but that's one comment I want to, there's one other, somebody asked, and I'm sorry for holding the floor, but there was one other, I did not intend to read that one. I just scrolled down and found it. There was another comment lower that asked the question, am I going to broadcast from AJ's? Yes. Yes. On Saturday, nice. I'm going to broadcast from AJ's. I was planning on doing a one of these. What we're doing a season wrap up. I really don't know if I need to talk about that anymore. Now that we've we've hit these the homages to the players. That's great. Um, but I yes, uh, there, I am going. I'm going to do. I th I'm guessing around four o'clock on Saturday do a live stream from AJ's after the spring game. That's my plan. Um, Foot basketball running right into football. When does isn't that? Isn't that wild? That is wild. <laughs> Did you know Less that was a week? Did you know that was allowed? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Yeah, before this year, I didn't think it existed. Well, I thought it was just like break. that's why you say the myth. transfer the transfer portal is happening pretty quickly. I think it's only happening pretty quickly because we made it to literally the last game possible. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so let's oh, see. Oh, Brian T asks what the ink design is going to be. Boiler okay, down. so I've been tinkering with it. I'm not. I'm not settled yet, but I've got a couple of things out there, and on the placement, I, I'm not sure exactly where. Lower back. Um, do I do a tramp stamp? Yeah, exactly. We, we go with that. Probably the right thing to do with some really pretty flurry, uh, you know, yeah. like, you know, some, some floral type lines around the motion P. Yeah. Maybe just like peeking out among my, just. When you bend over to pick something up. Yeah. You just lost your audio completely. <laughs> okay. So you know how that happened? You yanked I dropped my out. pen. I dropped my pen because I was twirling it. And it fell exactly where it needed to. And what are the odds that I hit the mute with my pen? <laughs> you can't probably can't hit it on purpose when you need yeah, to. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, exactly what you said. I bend over for for you know, I drop a nickel, I bend over and it says, Hey, I I too I was in like the final that. four. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Don't <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go to the final four to three straight years. I think that'll be fun. We'll go next year. Cool. Then we'll go in India. I think we'll do that. Like that. Yeah. Kind of like UConn just introduced us, and now we go on like a, yeah. you know, Purdue like, hey, UConn we're Purdue. Play we play go to national finals. championships. Yeah, exactly. Purdue, can, Purdue and UConn can play in three straight, and Purdue That'd can get cool. the next two, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Greg McManus has a very good idea for a, for the placement of my tattoo. Exactly. Inner thigh. Inner thigh. Great. Awesome. Uh, that poor tattoo artist. That poor, <laughs> poor tattoo artist. 
Yeah. So yes, there is going to be ink. I don't know where it's going to be yet. I don't know exactly what it's going to be yet. It's uh, Jay. Are you still in? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Anish, Nick. I'm in for peer pressure. Yeah, sure. Okay. A Tyson tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it wraps around my yeah, right eye. Tyson tattoo. Also I a good idea. The, the kind of one. I think the only closing thought, as we are at in 94 minutes here, yeah. that I have is that holy after, moly! After the FDU loss. Um, we were dreading this season because we knew that nothing mattered until March. And the fun part is that they pr- proved that completely wrong because it was so fun during yeah. the regular season. Yeah. And then also they proved that right because they were like, yeah, don't worry about it. We'll just go to the national championship game and it's fine. Um, yeah. Like they took care of business and it was great. Somehow they did everything. Um, and it was like, yeah, I mean like, and I'm, you know, me, like for the two of you, you want to see, which is never going to happen, a Purdue football championship. But like in our fi- in our fictional worlds, <laughs> it's like, never gonna happen. you know, you you know, you two would love to see a football championship more. For me, I'm the basketball one. Like this is I, oh. Purdue can win a basketball championship and then just fold the entire athletic department because I've seen all that I need to see. Um, but like, it, so you're on that side of of Booker's argument. Exactly. Like yeah. it is on. It's it's it, it was awesome. What a season! And Zach yeah. Eady's perfect. And like it it what a great time. Like it after the FDU loss, it seemed like this season was going to be such misery, and it it was the exact opposite of that. And I'm very grateful and thankful for yeah. that. Yeah. Jay, do you have any closing thoughts before we? That was so fun. It was so, so, so fun. And you're right, Anisha. It was so fun all year. And somebody said that in a reply to us. I don't know if it was on the, the cast we were doing on Sunday, but somebody said something like, <clears throat> they quoted your thing about everyone doesn't matter. Or you know, they said, going back to the beginning of the season, and you said, and everyone won't matter. Every loss is a referendum. Right. And they said, and it really, they said something like it didn't turn out that way. It felt like every win was super fun and every loss was like, okay, let's move on from this. And like, that's that's that takes quite a bit. It takes quite a team to change that in that short of a period because it got fun. It's not like they went to the final four and that's when you finally said, OK, last year doesn't hurt anymore. It, it was fun all year. It was so fun all year. Starting in Maui, it still got really fun, really fast. And and you realize this team was as laser focused as they could possibly be. And that was man, it was so fun. So, so fun. And I have no no regrets, no regrets. So no regrets. No regrets. So I'll, I'll jump off of that. Um, and I've had friends uh, call, text, whatever, ask if I'm okay. They know I'm an intense guy. They know that I get emotional about Purdue, negative, positive emotions, the whole thing, right? And I've had multiple people from my mom to ex coworkers just say, hey, and then I think they're not trying to taunt. I think they're trying to like care, which is good and say, are you all right? I hadn't heard from you. I'm like, well, hadn't heard from me because I, just didn't think I was supposed to call everyone the night when I got home because I'm, I'll let you all know I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm 48 years old, guys, and I just traveled. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't call and check in with everybody. I apologize, uh, especially old coworkers, which that was uh, one of the most unusual. And, and um, but they said, you're all right. And I said, listen, they said, and I can't say this clear enough. I don't know if you'll buy it. But yes, I'm absolutely all right. I'm extremely pleased with the season. I'm extremely happy that I went to Phoenix. What a blessing to be around that many people that I hadn't met that felt like friends and people that I hadn't met that were family already. The I have just zero regrets. It was it was a great trip. I got to spend time with uh, one of my best friends a significant amount of time, days. The one regret that I've got has nothing to do with Purdue winning or losing. And you guys are both involved. There is like a hole there because I didn't have all of my people there. Yeah. And I, and, and I know everybody who didn't go has a very good reason for not going. So I'm not calling you guys out. I just like, damn it. You would love this. Yeah. That's the thing. That's it. And like, so you guys weren't there. My college roommate wasn't there. Um, I had, well, my son wasn't there. My wife wasn't there. My family. I mean, right. like, Gosh darn it, guys! We're we all this again in Indy. We'll do it in Indy. Well, we'll do gosh, it in Indy. We'll I do it I, I pray that we do, and I hope this time we do it even better. We did it really well, Purdue. We did it well. We can do it better. And all the people that were on the fringe about going, and like you had very good reasons of not going, go next time. And you go for the game is great. Great, and I know the UConn fans give us shit for wearing Final Four stuff. Shove it. 
Okay. There's a lot more here than just that game. Damn it. It was great. And I missed you guys that I, that I couldn't spend time with. Like really, I mean that like you two specifically, you guys have been to so many big games. You deserve it. And and like, I, I hate hearing that type of stuff about entitlement. You guys deserve that environment. You guys deserved walking up to this final four stadium and seeing (laughs) Purdue everywhere. That's that awesome. stuff, man, you deserve that. Well, and I'm glad I got that. Yeah. I got to do it. And I, I think we're I feel pretty unanimous on this. Like, you know, to go out though, like this isn't Painter's last. Nope. No, nope. I agree. I agree. So I that, agree. that I, like, what, what a place to be in, right? And it's like it's the, and I do think that it is the. It, I don't think that Painter's got 19 more years in him, but I do think we're going to measure it in the before ED and after ED. I and think he's got about 10 left. Yeah, which is, mm-hmm. but like, think of all the great 63. players that have come. I don't think he's the type of guy that hold on to long. Yeah. I, I think he has 10 more years, and I think he goes to two, three more. Yeah. I really do. I really have never felt this this positive about that, even though I always was, we were all in locked up that he was the right guy. But, but once you break through, we see, we've seen it so many times, so many times. And they go, Jay Wright went to what three or four final fours in his last like six seasons or something. Right. Like he won two titles and he and he went to another final four that he lost at least one other. The last yeah. last year he coached, he was in the final four. Yeah. So, like when it happens, all of a sudden the floodgates open and you're a threat. So wait, so there's another. By the way, I found another <laughs> business model. I always do this. I look at history. So what are we like, right? We all think Jay Wright is a nice place to land for Matt Painter, of course. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're big like that. We're like, okay, yeah, we'll take a couple titles in a couple of years. Sure. There's another place you could land, though. There's a lot of other places you could land. You could land at Ohio State and Thad Mata, where you're like, okay, Thad Mata did it a similar way to Purdue in that he had these great players, but between 2006 and 2011, he had all America candidates that were player of the year adjacent or were the player of the year. Very similar to Purdue, right? And Purdue seems to me, oh boy, they're getting on a roll. There's more in the, uh, how did Anish butcher the phrase about something being the barrel, Jay? Something in the qu- clips. More yeah, clip yeah, yeah, I'm the, the, the barrel and the clips and the. Yeah, it was all of that. He nailed it. it was so bad. But there's more. There's there's firepower here and, th- and it is coming, right? That's the whole thing. So, Let's hope it's more Jay Wright and less Thad Mata. But even if it's Thad Mata, that's that that's oh, probably that's pretty damn fun. Program. Yeah, still yeah. be fun. Pretty good program. Yeah. Well, thanks guys, to AJ. thanks to AJ. Yeah. Thanks to Homefield. Yep. Thanks to AJ. They've been great all season. Thanks to everybody overall season for all of the games that we've been to that said that they liked bullet sports. It was cool. It was cool seeing you all. I'm sorry. I don't remember everybody's name. I remember Rahul cause he's one of my people. You remember a niche uh, at Virginia tech. <laughs> oh, I do remember a niche, but he wasn't a Purdue guy. He was a, he was a Virginia. Tech he was guy. in a niche. So but he was another yeah. niche. So all the niches out there, uh, shout out to you. Uh, there's only a couple, to... right? Is that right? Yeah. yeah they, just, they meet like quarterly like five. Yeah. You guys get together, right, and quarterly, have a cigar right. and talk yes. about like what what's on the agenda for this yeah, next exactly. quarter. What are we What are we going to accomplish now, Anishas and fellow Anishas? But it was great to see everybody. Yeah, shout out to AJ's. Shout out to Homefield. I've got two layers of Homefield on right now. Uh, so you have the underwear on, right? Uh, I, I it's just and I know that. You oh, you're home. Me. You don't have the underwear on, right? Uh-huh. I don't have the underwear on. No. Go on. Um, I, I, one of us on the, on this call saw the Purdue national championship shirt. Uh, I know that that those designs exist at home field and I just don't want to see them until it happens. But, uh, like, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait when it, when it does. I can't wait until it does. Yeah. Well, guys, what a season. Uh, I, I'll say it. It's our, it's our best boiled sports season ever. And, uh, it's, it, it's, it's. Obviously, because the product was ridiculously good. I mean, <laughs> ridiculously good. So it's easy to talk about such a good product, but it's also great to talk to people that are similarly interested, similarly passionate. And that's been the story all year is the interaction. It's been great. Thanks for helping Boiled Sports grow. We're not done yet. Like I said, I'm going to be broadcasting on Saturday from AJ's, probably around four o'clock streaming. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about spring games, which are stupid, um, but I love them. And I'll talk about uh, maybe, maybe hopefully just talk you guys up a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm Todd, Todd Singer. That's the guy who asked about it and I couldn't find the comment, but Todd, yes, I'll be at AJ's after the spring game and I hope to see you there. 
for everybody else that's here that we didn't interact with and we haven't interacted with the season, hopefully all of our virtual pals eventually become pals in the analog and we get to shake their hand, dab them up a little bit, say hammer down. Till we meet, God bless you, hammer down. I love you guys. Good night. <laughs>